Hey, Shalom, Marco, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, as always, we want to give all our praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Merchakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that taught us his truth, and much peace, love, and salutation to the elect Akim, scattered across the four corners of the earth, pushing the sword with all truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Tazamma from the Great Millstone Dallas camp. I now from GMS Dallas. And we're just coming back with another quick lesson, and Lord willing, it's going to be edifying to the flock of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And uh, today's title of the lesson is going to be Don't Let Worldly Opinions Hinder Your Mission. All right, don't let uh, worldly opinions hinder your mission. All right, because, you know, at times, you know, the opinions of others could, you know, cause you to slow down. You know, the the opinions of others, what other people think about you can, can alter your mind frame on the true mission at hand. And, you know, keeping keeping the keeping the main thing the main thing, which is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, as the scripture says, seek ye out the kingdom of heaven and all things will be added unto you. You know, let let you, let your mind uh you know, uh what is that in Colossians the third chapter? Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. You know, because uh, you know the opinions of the world and what people may think about you and then you altering your mind frame like you know what maybe these people are right that's just satan you know that's just satan playing uh, uh tricks on your mind to make you fall to the uh the opinions of this world which you know we're not of this world okay at the end of the day these people like as of lately man we just been <laughs> just been looking like man these people are dumb like they don't have it you know what i'm saying and that's we're not saying that to be just no it's just the facts like these people are stupid man you know what what is a what is an opinion of a catfish a catfish eating nigga got to do with what what we're talking about right you know what i'm saying or somebody that believes in jesus christ as a so-called white man or that uh god god loves everybody and all nations can be saved and trusting in this man's system what does an opinion like that have to do like what like what does a person's opinion like that have to do with what we're following. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're at, we're on a whole another level than these people, man. And that's all. That's, that's something to always keep in mind. God. Okay. Did you have uh, you want to you want to grab the Colossians? Yeah, it's Colossians chapter three, verse verse two. It says, "Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth." Right. So we got to set our affections or or our desires on things above and not on things on the earth, man. Mm -hmm. And who who is above? All right, yeah. who who is above is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man, who sits on the on the throne. All right, you got the Yahweh, which is the heavenly Father, and then you got Yahweh Shai, which is the only begotten Son. You see, and the things that are above are immortality, righteousness. You see, everlasting life. These are the things that we set our minds on because we understand and know that this this world, as we know it, this system, the opinions that come with this world, this whole anti-Messiah system, anti-Mashiach system. It's all going to be destroyed. So there's nothing to even set your mind on when somebody has an opinion on an on an anti mashiach based uh, mindset. You see? Go ahead. Come, on, continue on in verse three. It says, "For ye are dead, and your life is hid with mashiach and your house." Uh, excuse me. Uh, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with mashiach in the Most High. Right. So we're dead. We got to be dead to this world, man. We got to be dead to the opinions that come to the, come with this world. You know, we understand and know that, you know, it's not going to be fair in the flesh. I'd rather say it's not going to look like it's going to be fair. Mm -hmm. All right. Because we're dealing with we're dealing with Satan. All right. So we're dealing with the prince of the power of the air, which this is his world. As the scripture says, the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. Now, even though it was even though he's ruling, it was given unto him and it's going to be taken away. But we know that it's not going to be fair. It's not going to be comfortable. They're going to bring out all kinds of lies and accusations against us. Mm hmm. And the lies and the accusations that will be put out against us, we can't let the opinions of this world and the opinions of others make us fold. Kind of. You know? Who said? Kind of. This is First John chapter 5. Excuse me. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Uh -huh. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You got it. So this world, this current present situation that we're in, where self-proclaimed white man is above, uh, you know, the Israelites and putting hell on Jake and, you know, poisoning the water and the food and the air and the minds of our people. If you are in love with this <clears throat> scenario that we're in and you're not seeking salvation from this worst case scenario, then you don't do not have the uh, spirit of most high 
uh, within you, man, is and it's not dealing with you, man. Okay, mm -hmm. it says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. So mm -hmm. all of these things that are pushed uh, in this society as desirable, you know, the, the cars and the, and the fake money and the fame and these wicked ass women, you know, that's what black culture teaches you to, to desire. But it says all of these are not of the most, it's not, it's not of the Father of the Most High, Yahweh, but it's of the world, man. Mm -hmm. in which the scriptures say that the whole world lies in wickedness. So if you're desiring these things, man, you're not, your eyes are not on the prize. Right. You got it, bro. Kind of, no, that's right, man. If you're desiring the things of this world, your eyes are on the prize because the prize is after this world. Mm -hmm. You know, the prize is like the scripture says, uh, Jacob or Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, man. Mm -hmm. You see, so we understand that, uh, what's the scripture in Second Andrews? It says, uh, uh, what, what much glory doth abide? Let me, let me pull oh, this is right. not the time when much glory doth abide. Yeah, um, um, <clears throat> I got it right here. Is in the fourth chapter? Yeah, Second Amos seven and forty two. Let's start up at verse uh, forty one real quick. Uh, Second Amos seven and forty one. It says, it says, even so now, even so now, seeing corruption is grown up, and wickedness increased, and we know that we're in that time frame right now. All right, corruption is grown up, and wickedness has increased on a high level, man. All right, the scripture says that uh, that gross darkness is gonna is is gonna cover the people. It says, even so now, seeing corruption is grown up and wickedness increased, and the righteous have prayed for the ungodly, right? Wherefore shall it not be so now also? He answered me and said, This present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. You see, so the reason why people really take consideration into this life in this world that they live in now and try to and try to have the achievements and the pride in this side is because they truly believe that this life is the end they don't see you know two-thirds of our people don't see they don't see anything beyond america you know they don't see anything beyond you know living a, a stimulus check mm -hmm. for 14 a little measly fourteen hundred dollars man, man. Which you know, I'm, you know, hey, if, if 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 this is what the Lord gives, you know, through, through He using the enemy to do it, hey, I'm, I'm thankful for it. Mm -hmm. But that, that ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? And we don't we don't base our life upon a stimulus check. Come on. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? People dying and getting shot over fourteen hundred dollars, man. You, you see in debt for for forty thousand dollars if you went to college, right? Or more than that, depending on how long how long you went. This whole life is based <laughs> upon debt, man. You if if you wanna if you wanna have a family. You know, you want to have a child, which the scriptures tell us to be fruitful and multiply. If you want to have a child in Babylon, you're pretty much going in the debt. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, and it's, it's backwards, man. So it says he answered me and said, this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. You see, so this isn't the end. But our people have their minds so encapsulated with the sorceries and the witchcraft that this place has to offer and the opinions of what this world teaches you. That they believe that this is the end. It says, therefore, have they prayed for the weak? It says, but the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of the immor immorality. Excuse me. Excuse me. Salakia. Like we read that again. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning in the beginning of immortality for to come where corruption is past. You see, so the day of, what this world has to offer when it's all said and done is going to be doom and destruction. Mm -hmm. That's why the scripture says in second Peter uh, three. It says that for the heavens shall pass away with the great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat mm -hmm. when the Lord comes back and, and destroys this this system. Mm -hmm. Because this system, as we know it, is, is nothing more than is built upon bloodshed, is built upon lies, robbery and deceit, man. You see, and with these with the lies, robberies and deceits that this that this man Esau has pushed forth, it is formulated and cultivated a, a, a negative connotation, a negative opinion about yourself as well as well as against righteousness mm -hmm. you see if, if if anything that's done in wickedness is gloated but anything that's righteous according to the heavenly father that's that's looked at as being wicked it tells you that in uh uh, uh i want to say it's in the book of malachi you know the uh the, the you don't gotta get it but i think it's like the third chapter like at the towards the very end you know but um but did you have anything yeah um I got that one in John, and then Colossians. That was pretty much it on that. Oh, uh, I know you want a second Ezra, right? Yeah, second Ezra fifteen. Okay, this is second Ezra chapter fifteen, verse one. It says, "Behold, 
Speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in their mouth, excuse me, which I will put in thy mouth, saith Yahweh. Right, so that's the that's the key. Alright, who who are the ones that are really speaking prophecy into the planet Earth? Okay? Who who are the ones that are really going into these prophecies and breaking these things down, rightly dividing the word of truth? You know, and and, and, and we just gotta say it. It's, it start it starts with the elders and apostles, a great millstone on down, man. Mm -hmm. And the, and the individuals who follow the doctrine that they teach, man. Okay. See, because that's what it is. Like the scripture says, the testimony of Yahweh is the spirit of prophecy. Okay. So that's that's hey, the scriptures also says that we that we we should covet the prophesy. Okay. You know, because the main prophecy is what you know, Babylon the Great being destroyed. That's yep. that's the main prophecy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse two, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. All right. So the things that are written in paper are these scriptures. All right, what you see written, and nothing, no other book can match up to what the Holy Bible has to say through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah and through his word, man. It says they are faithful and true. And the scripture says what? It says, uh, uh, what if some did not believe? Shall I make the, the faith of the Most High without, without effect? God forbid. Right. You see, everything that the Lord said it, it was going to happen has either happened, is, is happening, or is getting ready to happen. All right, the Lord, the, the word of the Lord doesn't come back void, man. You got it. This is uh, Isaiah 34 and 16. Seek out of the book, seek ye out of the book of Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, and read, none, excuse me, no one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate, for my mouth it has it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. Mm -hmm. So those none of those prophecies that the Most High has commanded the prophets to speak, okay, his true prophets, none of them are going to, to, uh, to fail, man. And that's what makes this book special, like you're going into, bro. You know, you got people that make the argument of, oh, the Bible's been rewritten, you know, translated from, well, they don't even understand that it's been translated. They just say, oh, it's been rewritten so many times. So even though we know that it was, that it's, that it's still God's well, word, I well, can't if I, if, I, if I may, they, what do they say now? They, they just say, oh, it was written by a white man. You got to be a dumbass to think that. I mean, but it's like, okay, what else was written? Let's say, well, that was written by the white man. Okay, well, that you, you get a lot of these different authors in these different books that you read. That was written by the so-called white man. Right. You see, any history that you read up on, on a key figures in history, you want to read about Ma'at uh, uh, Ma or, or Pharaoh, all these different guys. That, who, who are the guys? Who, who, was, who, who are the individuals that translated the, uh, the hieroglyphs? <clears throat> it, was, it was an Edomite, a Frenchman. You see what I'm saying? So using this whole uh, the Bible, that was written by the I man. The Bible was written by a white man. King so, James was a white man. So Genesis was written by a white man, right? Come on, bro. Yeah, he, that's what they believe. <laughs> With Esau being their god, man, they believe he was back there in the beginning. Right. They believe that Esau was back there looking at the creation. That's why that, that's why Esau can claim a Big Bang theory and also a theory once again, and he can claim all these different things. You know, I I ain't gonna cut you off. You yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that's you, like that, that's why I say you got to be a dumbass to think that, because you're basically saying <clears throat> that Moses and all of the prophets were white, so-called white people. And why do we got to worry about the opinion of somebody that thinks like that? Like, I don't got to explain. Of course, we, we explain things through the spirit because that's what we're commanded to do. But I don't got to worry about the opinions of a, of, a, of a, like I said, of a catfish eating, you know, a, a, a Christianity infused mind of a nigga. I, I, right. We don't got to I don't got to worry about trying to worry about your opinion that, that you cultivated about about me. Mm -hmm. You know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah, I know the truth. Kind. You see what I'm saying? You don't. Yep. What what I gotta worry about your opinions for, man? Kind. You know? That's I don't gotta worry about to a camp yesterday. Yeah, we don't and that you know through the spirit, you know, unfortunately I wasn't able to make camp yesterday, but as I was listening, that's what made me want to prompt to do, make this lesson. Mm. See what I'm saying? You don't gotta worry about the opinions of these of these people, man. Kind. You know, we know it's true. We know it's right through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Shai. These people are the ones that are wrong. Mm -hmm. All right? Well, let's jump back to 2nd Ezra. <clears throat> back in 2nd Ezra. You on verse 3. Yep, 15 and 3. <clears throat> it says, Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Right, so we're not to fear that imaginations against us, man. These people imagine vain things against us as if... You know, eventually we're going to be put to death and that eventually, you know, this this as they say, that as they say, the black Hebrew Israelites movement is going to be uh, uh, squashed or whatever they whatever they say, which we're not black. But the, the imaginations against us and the incredulity against us is not uh, is not going to trouble us, man. 
And that word incredulity, I have it here in the etymology online. It says disbelieving frame of mind. See, so like the scripture says that he says that what did the most high is gave them over to a reprobate mind, a mind void of judgment. So they have a disbelief as having a disbelieving frame of mind. It says incredulite from old French incredulity from Latin incredulitatum or incredulitas unbelief. Hmm. You see, noun or quality from incred incredulous, unbelieving. So the the incredulity is literally uh, having a mind of unbelief. You see, and these people don't believe. These people don't believe that Yahweh Shah was a so-called black man. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that the heavenly Father, you know, is a so-called black man as well. They don't believe that they're the Israelites. They don't believe that Moses, you know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, King David, all the prophets and men of the Lord were were, were men of color like us. They don't believe they don't believe the prophecies that were coming out there in the highways of byways preaching, you know, the microchip being a, a mark of the beast, yep. you know, martial law coming to this place, you know, that, that America is Babylon the great. They don't believe these things. So scripture says, what well, fear not the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity or the unbelief of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Right. You see, so we're not to let the the unbelief of the unbelief of others like we 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 we, we uh, quoted it, we quoted it earlier. It says, for what if some did not believe? Shall that uh, shall they, shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? God yeah. forbid. Hell no. Right. Most High's word is still gonna come to pass regardless if you believe or not. <laughs> come. You see, go ahead. You can read verse four. Verse four says, "For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness." <laughs> right. So why do I got to worry about the opinion of a nigga that's going to die at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. And I hate to say, you know, I, you know what? No, I ain't going to say I hate to say it that way. It's just the truth. Yeah. See, what I, you know, these people who believe in Christianity and that believe in, 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 in Esau's society as if this is the end all be all. This is the way. Here it is. Uh, trans transgenderism and, and pedophilia is the way, <sighs> you know, you got a president who endorses all kinds of freakism and wickedness. And that's the way. But. They you got our people over here sticking their arms out to get jabs and things of that nature, but they now, now you worried about the opinion of a of a jab getting nigga, right? You know what I'm saying? A nigga that would say I willingly put my arm out and I willingly take the shot. You got to worry about a nigga like that. They you worried about what somebody like that got to say? You're too far gone, man. The most high gonna kill a nigga like that. Most high gonna kill. All these, uh, most of these niggas, man. You know these these wop ass niggas. Like we was watching that video on the world on the uh, on the uh, chat yesterday about these girls. That girl that's uh, yeah yeah. You know uh, I'm uh, you know what I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, this is all fucking wicked at the end of the day. I'm gonna go ahead and bless my man with uh, having a threesome and I'm gonna let him pick out the dude. These people need to be oh, yeah. completely oh, yeah. wiped out. Yeah, that's 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 that proud ass uh, rapper bitch. Oh man. Hey, man, these women are proud, man. These Stephen A. Smith, these niggas, man. Yep. These all these guys that follow after this system, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is going to utterly obliterate. Our, he's going to take. They're they're going to be wiped out. So why worry about the opinion of a nigga that's going to be wiped out? You see what I'm saying? Uh, like these these eraser marks. You know what I'm saying? They're just they're just going to be erased. You know. Hmm. Okay. Uh, did you have a precept? We can jump to the next scripture. Yeah, uh, let me get this real quick. Okay. Uh, it says, pray not for these people. Uh, okay, Jeremiah. Yeah, Jeremiah 9. Uh, 14 and 11. Jeremiah 14 and 11, all right. Because yeah. I was thinking about uh, Jeremiah 16, but I wanted the one that specifically said it. This is, uh, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 14. Verse 11. And if I may just real quick before the brother goes into this precept, you know, Jeremiah was a Levite. He was a priest. Mm -hmm. You see, and, and, and what was the priest's job? All right. The priest's job was to enter, to be an intercessor between the people and the Heavenly Father. The priest was the mediator between the, uh, the Israelites and the Heavenly Father. So check out what the Heavenly Father told Jeremiah. Go ahead. Jeremiah 14 and 11. Then said Yahweh unto me. Pray not for this people for their good. So the Lord, like, man, look, you know, actually, you know, you can break it down. You got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Lord was telling Jeremiah, look, man, look, I know that you, you know, that you, just like how Moses, you know, Moses prayed for the for the people that uh, that the you know, most I didn't, you know, wipe them out, you know, when uh when they were in the wilderness. Yep. You know, thirty two. Yep. But you know, the Lord was like, look, 
look, bro, don't even don't even send a petition. They already they already sealed their destruction. They are already that's why that's why Zechariah was able to write about the two thirds thousands of years ago before they actually get burned up here in America and various parts of the earth. That's why he was able to do that, because they were already it was already determined that they were not going to make it, man. They were not going to enter into the Most High's rest. Yep. So what's, there's no point in praying for those people, man. All right. Okay. We pray for the elect, you know. Now, do we still have love for Israel? Yes, but we understand the Most High loves Israel more than anybody. And he still put them to death. So we can't come against that and try to say, oh, well, I want to save my, you know, every everybody in my family. Well, we can't even save ourselves, man. Right. You know? Right. So continuing on, it says, when they fast... I will not hear their cry. Hmm. And when they, they offer a burnt offering and an, ob and an oblation, I will not accept them. Mm -hmm. But I will and That goes back to Isaiah, the first chapter. Mm -hmm. You know, when they do these sacrifices and all this other stuff, the Lord ain't going, he's not going to hear them, man. When the, when the time of trouble comes, you think the most high going to hear, hear these niggas' opinions of what they want to say now when trouble hits? Right. That's the scripture. They will seek me early. Mm -hmm. The black apostle's heart said, man, they're going to suffer the same fate as Esau on this side. <clears throat> they're not going to be able... They're not going to... Their their petitions are not going to be heard, man. Right. Because they turned their back on the Most High. Now that they now the hell's getting put on them, you know. Uh, and hell's already being put on us enough now to where we should uh, understand, okay, Lord, you know, hey, you you know. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We should be willing to repent now, but <clears throat> the Most High done already sent the prophets out, and Jake still don't want to listen, man. Hey, that's why we be saying to hell with you, Jakes, man. Two third, yep. two, two, two third of, of 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 our people, they're just not gonna repent. They're not. That's not in them to. Right. They're not created to. Right. So the only ones that are gonna repent are those who, who the Lord, who the Lord has chosen to to be uh to be repented. Mm -hmm. You got it. Yep. So uh, I'll finish the verse. <clears throat> it says, <clears throat> "Excuse me. I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword." And by the famine and by the pestilence. And that's how we're telling you people, that's how y'all going to go out, man. Yep. You know, you're not going to believe it until it happens to you. So, uh, is there more in uh, second message you want me to get? Uh, no, nah, let's jump to John 15 and 19. Okay. This is uh, St. John chapter... Actually, start at verse 18. Okay. St. John chapter 15 and verse 18. It's the old faithful right here. Mm -hmm. uh, 15 and 18, it says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Right. So if the world hates you, which we know the world hates righteousness, the world, the, the whole, scripture says the world lieth in wickedness. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if the world hates you and we stand up for righteousness, the scripture says that what? That matter of fact, let's get that. I'm going to get that for you real quick. They hate him. That, re, that reproved it. Uh, Rebuked it in the gate. Yeah. God. What's that? Uh, uh, Amos 5 and 10. It says they hate him that rebuketh in the gate. And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. You see, so they the, the, these people hate us that rebuke and reprove with with correction from the scriptures because that's the true righteous way. Righteous way. You see, and they abhor him or they hate or detest him that speaketh uprightly. Scripture, scripture says that in, in, in Isaiah fifty nine that he that uh he that he that turns to righteousness and turns the truth makes himself a prey. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So it says if, if the world hate you. Right, and we understand why the world hates us due to what we just read. You know that it hated me before it hated you. So they really, honestly, don't hate us. They hate Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You see, they hate they hate the Lord at the end of the day. That's the reason why they're they're showing their anger and hate towards us because we're nothing more than just spokesmen for the Lord. All right, we're, we're, we're all we're doing is just speaking what the Lord commanded us to say and what He wants us to say. You see, so they they don't necessarily hate us they hate the message that comes from from us because it's a message from on high you mm. see okay. what's that scripture in thessalonians it says that uh, uh he that uh uh how pretty much that they're they're, co they're going they're actually going up against the heavenly father but not against us yeah i was actually thinking about a precept in first samuel but let me get it <clears throat> let me find this in uh first i think it's first thessalonians, thessalonians uh like one or something like that let me see Dang, I, I see. I said I ain't been. I ain't read that scripture in a minute. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see if I got a highlight. It might be Second Thessalonians. Let me see. I know First Thessalonians talk about um, seeing as a righteous thing to reap trouble. Right. 
I mean, uh, excuse me, Second Thessalonians, first chapter. Yeah, Second Thessalonians one is it might be First Thessalonians four. Um, I found it. First Thessalonians chapter four verse eight. It says, "He therefore that despiseth, mm -hmm. despiseth not man, right, but the Most High, who hath also given unto us His Holy Spirit." You got it. Mm -hmm. Right, man. And I'm looking at it now. It says, "It says, he that despiseth despiseth not man." So you, you got a beef with the Most High, man. At the end of the day, if you're not listening to the prophets, and uh, I was looking for that account in First uh, Samuel where the people were the, were requiring of Samuel a king and the most high you know Samuel was getting pissed off he was like man lord they they you know they being disobedient he was like look don't even don't even trip on us Samuel you know what I'm saying they they it's not that, like they being disobedient to you they being disobedient to me mm. so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to give them what they want just like how the lord gave uh Israel that meat in the wilderness when they already had manna mm -hmm. he gave them the quail and they you know those people, uh, those people, they they caught hell after they was eating that. Uh, after they started eating that quail, man. Right. You know, because they was like not thinking that that the Most High's uh, grace was sufficient. They were trying to control the Most High's miracles. You imagine that? Here it is, the Most High give you a miracle. You know, saying by feeding you and preserving you in the wilderness, but that's not enough. You want to have it directly your way, when as if you know better than him. Right, right. Have it your way. That Burger King spirit. Right, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And have it your way. Hungry, why wait? Exactly. Yeah, man. You know, but like it says, like he therefore that despises or if you who who anybody who refuses to hear the message, they're not despising man. They're not refusing our message because you know no. they look at it as a human, just as as us, just just oh, this is the teaching that they came up with. But no, nah, they 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 refusing the message from the heavenly Father. Right. It's like I was watching that whole uh, uh, in the days of Noah little animation, man. They refused the message that Noah teached mm -hmm. for 120 years while he was building that ark, man. Mm -hmm. He was building the ark and he was showing forth his faith and the people was literally seeing it. And then what? What happened? The Lord sealed him up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then he brought forth the rains, man, and, and literally flooded the whole earth, man. And everybody knew at that point that it was too late. The doors of mercy was shut. See, mm -hmm. so we, it's the same. It's the same thing, man. We can't worry about the opinions of what other others believe about us, man. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and jump back to John. Uh, this is uh, back in St. John chapter fifteen and verse nineteen. Verse nineteen. It says, "If ye are, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own." All right. So if you were of the world, you know, if if if. if if, if if you were of the world and you were in the world doing things of the world like the brother read earlier in first John 2 and 15 you know you were you were you were uh, being moved by the lust of the flesh the pride of life the lust of the eyes and these things were controlling you then the world would love you yeah you would blend in you would exactly you would blend in you know that's why the, that's why you know these celebrities like Floyd Mayweather Jay-Z LeBron James uh, uh, Denzel you know just naming just a couple of the few you know what I'm saying if you were of the world the world would love you that's why they look at these people and they and they gloat them as as what they call them superstars, celebrities, you know, idols, icons. Mm -hmm. The world will love you as its own if you're of this world, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says, continuing on in verse uh, in the middle of verse nineteen, but because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Right. So just because now that we're not in the world, you know. We're not of the world in the in in Yahweh by Shemi Shai literally plucked us up out of our bullshit ass life that we was living mm -hmm. and, and and put us over here to the side to, to change, right? And to live a and, and to live a life based upon more righteousness. Therefore the world hates you now. You see, the world is gonna hate you if you're choosing righteous ways, man. You see? So if the world is gonna hate you for righteousness sake. Understand that the opinions of these people are going to be against you. If you got the opinions of the masses of people are for you and not against you, something ain't right. What's the scripture say in Matthew 5? I think it says, blesses, blesses it when men, uh, when men shall hate you and revile you. Mm -hmm. Let me grab that real quick. Yeah, I'll read it for you. This is uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse, uh, I want to say 11. it's like 11. Okay. Right, kind. This is a uh, blessed, or excuse me, I was gonna say blessed chapter five. This is Rev uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter five, verse eleven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you 
and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Mm -hmm. And the scriptures talk about that, man. Uh, what is that in First Peter? I believe it's in like the second, the second chapter. Uh, basically, where it talk about uh, it may not be the second, it may not be in First Peter, but it talks about um, you know when we may have manifold temptations, we may be going through different things, we may be catching hell, we may have heaviness for a time for our tribulations, but we have to understand that we at the end of the day are being just like just like just like a just like a like how the body rejects impurities well if you're in a you're if you are the pureness in a body full of impurity you're going to be rejected there's no way around it and so naturally people are going to refrain themselves from you and and disassociate themselves from you when they find out what you're a part of because if they're not if they're not in agreement with it you know, uh -huh. if they're down for it to a certain degree, then you know it may be compatible. But for the most part, man, they're gonna they're gonna reject you, man. Just like how they rejected Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai was killed. He didn't die of old age or complications. Uh, you know, he was murdered, man. Yep. Okay. Yep. Because of the opinions of other people that were false. At that, they were they were wrong. They were uh, uh you know, they were wrong, man. When they put him to death, man. Yep, but the hair had to go. He had to go through that, you know, to to get glorified at the end of the day. Yep, you know, it's a scripture, the uh, Hebrews twelve. I want to say it is Hebrews twelve and uh, uh, three. It says, "For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself." Right. Let me read this again. It says, "For consider him that endured much such contradiction of sinners against himself." At least ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Hmm. You see, so we gotta consider. We gotta consider Yahweh Shai, man. God. You see, think of the think of what Yahweh Shai had to go through, and the contradiction of, of 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 unbelievers and the sinners against him and what he was preaching. It says, At "Least ye be wearied and faint in your minds." You see, because we can't be wearied and faint in our minds when we really haven't even gone through nothing yet. God. Like it's like the next verse says, "Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin." See, we have never, we haven't, we haven't given our lives literally fully. When I say given our lives, what I mean is like, whereas your physical life is on the line for what you believe in and what you stand for. You see, the other prophets had to go through that and we are, we are those prophets coming back, you see, and we're going to come to a point where it's going to be either choosing righteousness or falling and in, 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 in falling down and worshiping Baal. God. You see, and it's going to be a clean cut decision between the two and who who are the true followers of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah and who ain't. You see? So we can't let the opinions of, of this world or the or the opinions of others, you know, let it make us fold in temptation and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. You see? Um let's go from here real quick to first John four and we'll we're going to wrap it up. First John chapter four I'll read it for you. First, I'll read verse four through six. You can break it down. First John chapter four, verse four it says, "Ye are ye are of the Most High, little children, mm -hmm. and have overcome them." It says, "Because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world." Yeah, because if you read up uh, in the first three verses, it talks about how false prophets are going into the world. It talks about how we know and how we're able to determine who are not who who uh, is a false prophet and who's not. I mean, it's those that are speaking. The words of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. But we overcome, we've overcome death, man, through Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. You know, through Yahweh Shai, it says, because greater is he that is in you that, than he that is in the world. A nigga that's in the world is destined for death. 100% mm -hmm. guaranteed, no doubt about it. But we, at least we have a chance for salvation. So, again, why should we get dis, uh, discouraged and Man, the most I, the most I told uh, uh, Jeremiah, look, if you fold, man, I'm going to confound you before their face. You better hold strong and, re and represent me properly. Because mm -hmm, I'm with you. Right. <laughs> you know, the most, I, yeah. the most I don't take that lightly, man, when you try to downplay, you know, when you, when you, uh, and when you end up downplaying his power, man, in mm -hmm. the sight of the people. Like, nah, he's going to be magnified and glorified. That's why he's giving you the information that you have now to win, for when that day comes for you to prove your faith, for you to for you to exemplify. It. You know, that's why you listen to the videos. That's why you watching videos. You know, that's why you're doing what you can to continue to grow in the spirit so that 
when that time comes of persecution to the max level, the tribulation 10 days, like the uh, Revelation, was that the Revelation second chapter, chapter 2? Yeah. Revelation, the second chapter talks about, we got to be willing to endure that, man. And whatever it comes with that, you know, we believe that spiritually we're going to be prepared to to get through it. Mm -hmm. We got to go. Verse five, it says, uh, they are, they are of the world. Mm -hmm. Therefore speak they of the world and the world hear them. Right. They're of the world. Mm -hmm. That's why they speak of the world. They only speaking man's wisdom. They don't have the information that we have. They speak from the world's viewpoint, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is wrong, man. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the viewpoint of, of, of death. Did not the did not the, did not Paul say that he made the, that the Most High made foolish the wisdom of this world? Right. The wisdom of this world is foolish, man. It's, it's foolishness. Here it is: the wisdom of this world is praise and wop, or the wisdom of this world is praise and, and, and a man changing himself into a woman. You know what I'm saying? Or a child changing himself into a little girl, or you know what I mean? Uh, all all this madness, man. That's that's the so-called wisdom of this world, which is foolish, man. So why why worried about the why worried about a nigga with an opinion in this world? That's completely contrary to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You got it. Mm -hmm. Can you read verse 5 again? Kind of says, They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world hear it them. Right, so everybody in the world going to agree with a nigga because they are a product of the world. They're a spawn of this world. Mm -hmm. That's why they're able to thrive in it and not have a guilty conscience of being demonic as hell because the the world taught them what's right and wrong mm -hmm. not y'all by shmi all shot just imagine if you had floyd mayweather out there on the street corners right now Man. and he wasn't speaking the truth but he had a bible and you know what i'm saying he's talking you know how many people would you know what i'm saying would, would come up and flock to him and mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying td jakes but if he start teaching the teaching the truth Everybody disown him. Everybody would. He would be. He'd be an outcast. They'd take all his uh, accolades away from him. Take all his mm -hmm. fifty belts or mm -hmm. fifty W's that he got. You know, they'll take. They'll take the the the, the money. Uh, what what TMT? They'll take that shit away. They'll take. They're building a Floyd Mayweather store in in Victory Park out here in Dallas. They're gonna take that shit away. Esau gonna buy that shit up. Everything. You ain't gonna be able to find none of his music. I mean, excuse me, not music. But none of his uh, uh, fights. You know, yep. it's gonna be. They're just gonna erase it, man. Yep, yep. Verse six. It says, "We we are of the Most High. Mm -hmm. He that knoweth the Most High heareth us, mm. and he that is not of the Most High heareth not us. Hereby know we the Spirit of Truth and the Spirit of Error." Mm -hmm. See that? So those at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, it says, "He that knoweth the Most High hears us." Those who are of the elect and those who are of Yahweh Bashim al are going to hear the message that we preach and believe it. At the end of the day, that's why the scripture says that the spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the sons of the living power. You see, those who belong to Yahweh Bashim al who listen to our message and accept it are spirits who are destined to accept it at the end of the day. And it says, He that is not of the most high here, not us. So if you're not of Yahweh Bashim al and you're not of righteousness, you're not going to you, you, you may hear the message, but you're not going to understand and perceive it to be right. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be completely against it. And that just further proves who who has the spirit of the truth and who has the spirit of deception, who has the spirit of error, man. That that proves it. That's like the scripture says, you know, you use the word to uh, uh, try the spirits by the spirits, man. You mm -hmm. try the spirits by with the word. And if anybody doesn't want to accept what we teach and they come up against it, scoff at it, book up against it, they're not of the most high. Point blank, period. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. And uh, did you have anything else? No, I think I think that's it, bro. Kind of. Well, you know, hey, we do the spirit of poverty. How about some outside? We believe the point has been made through the spirit. You know, don't worry about the opinions of this world, man. Don't worry about the the the, the opinion of a catfish eating. You know, a catfish eating. You know. Nigga, niggas, man. man. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, man. You know, a shrimp, a shrimp scampi. Man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Alfredo, shrimp Alfredo eating nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? We don't got to worry about the opinions of these people because their opinions are false at the end of the day. They believe in a lie. Right. Why worry about the opinion of somebody who believes in a complete, absolute lie? Mm -hmm. When you know that through the spirit and the power of your heart, by Shem Shah, you have the truth. Yep. That's why, that's why King David was like, well, he, before he was king, but that's why David was like, look, man, I'm supposed to 
give a damn about what this uncircumcised Philistine has uh, has to say? <laughs> right, straight up, yeah. Like, ain't nobody tripping on this man. He okay, he big and strong and tall and got six toes and all that stuff, but he don't believe in how about me outside. So where is his strength? Right, that's right. You know, that's, that's right. how we gotta look at it, man. In every situation, you know. That's right. That's so, right. You got it, bro. Hey, so with that, you know, we want to give all our praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Chakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders. A great millstone that taught us his truth. And as always, much peace, love, and salutations to the elect. Shalom. Shalom.